Okay, so as I've said in last week's Room Talk video and today's Room Talk video that I just finished recording, I finished my playthrough of Super Mario 64. 120 stars. Yes, some of them were already on the file. Yes, some of them my roommates got. But I tried to specifically go back and get the ones that I know I specifically didn't get. So I can say I've gotten all 120. I've also gotten every... St over the years, <laughs> the multiple, multiple times I played this game, I can say I have gotten every star once, so I can safely say that yes, I have completed it. With that being said, this is not going to be a real review of the game. Because I will be honest, I don't think it would get a great score overall. It's like, okay, presentation. The music is phenomenal. The sound effects are fucking iconic. The graphics... Bowser looks fucking weird, but this to me is just kind of how Bowser looks. So we get to pass and like Mar, like the weird, like almost. I'm sorry, my brain stopped. Which the weird, uh, there's times where I've played this game and I'm like, I can literally like count the pixels on Mario. There's other times where I think he looks fine. The camera, it's a jank piece of shit. We know it. It revolutionized the way cameras work in games, and there's times where the camera, like, I can get the exact angle I want and it works well, but there's other times where it, I have to fight the camera just as much as I have to fight the bullies and Bowser. Uh, some of the levels, and, like, the actual gameplay. I think the base gameplay and shit is really fun. Some of the stars suck. Some of the entire levels suck like the wing cap i think sucks i have never liked the wing cap i think it's just kind of a janky piece of shit in terms of story there's not really much of a story it's like there's nothing wrong with it so i guess it gets full credit but also i mean it's the most basic shit so i probably don't even know if i give a full credit like i don't know what i would give it for a real honest score but I can also say it's one of my favorite games of all time. It always has been. It always will be. I think Odyssey is probably a little bit better. I think Galaxy is probably a little bit better. I haven't played Sunshine. I need to. But 64 hits me. It is... Okay, I. <clears throat> that is my comfort food game. Because I know I've said that before, like, Celeste is not comfort, it is catharsis. Mario 64 is kind of the comfort food game. It really fucking is. And then, like, when you get onto the top of the castle after 120 stars and you talk to Yoshi, and he gives you that message about, like, hey, you did it, you did everything, the game might be over, but the fun never stops. That is such a fucking honest, honest sentiment. Because even after doing it, like, all right, we gotten all the stars, we finished the game. I immediately was like, I kind of want to just go ahead and do it again. I won't. I need to play The Witcher and, like, go through the list and shit. But I'm like, I really just want to keep playing. Because this game means the world to me. It just does. I love it. I loved it when I was a kid. I loved it when I was a teenager. I love it as someone who's about to turn 30 in two weeks. It is mwah, 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 phenomenal. Even though I kind of hate it. So what I wanted to do was just give my rankings on the courses. So this does not include any of the side shit. Like the Wing Mario over the rainbow or like the secret slide. It does not include the Bowser levels. Though I really like the Bowser levels. This is just Bomb on Battlefield is number one. Rainbow Ride is number 15. It's not actually my ranking. Like we'll get to that. But you know what I mean? Like all those courses. You got seven stars. Bam. So, another thing I feel like I should say is this is just based on my most recent playthrough. Because this shit changes a lot. What is my number one right now? I think the last time I played it was like number seven. It was just kind of middle of the road. It's fine. This playthrough, I adored it. What was my number third the last time I played is now in my bottom three. It really does change. It's, that's kind of why I love the game so much. I just have a different experience every time I play it. Each time I boot it up, it is something different. And that's why what Yoshi says is true. It's like, yeah, the fun will never end. There's always new ways to tackle shit. There's new experiences, even if it's exactly the same. So, with that being said, Shifting Sandland is number 15 because I fucking hate it. 
I... It, I think it has one of the worst red coin stars. Not the worst. We'll get to that. But it's one of the worst because it requires the wing cap. And I don't like the wing cap. Like I said, I think it's kind of a weird, jank piece of shit. The best way I've heard it described is Banjo-Kazooie gave you flight. Mario 64 gave you falling with style. And it really kind of is. I don't love it. On top of that... There's all, like, the instant death pits, which I find really annoying. They're mitigated with the Koopa shell, but even the Koopa shell just has weird hit detection at times. So, you think you're perfectly fine, and then next thing you know, you're just not. There's the stand on top of the four pyramid star. Or not the four pyramids, like, the four towers, the four pillars. I believe that's it, like, stand on top of the pillars or whatever. Which, you can do that. And then the pyramid still won't open because that happened a couple times. Like, I don't know why. Like, I stood on top of them. I, like, touched ground on all four of them. I got the coin on top of each one of them. What do you mean the thing isn't opening? What the fuck did I do wrong? This is bullshit. This is jank. I hate it. Ugh, I saw the spit come out. Uh, the bird's annoying. It's not awful but I, I don't care for it. I think I talked about all the instant death pits. I don't like them. Uh... The tornadoes, I find just irritating. They're not, like, a f kind of fun obstacle. To me, it's like, a, okay, we're doing this. The music... In Lethal Lava Land, I kind of like the song, but in Shifting Sandland, I don't. And I think it's just because of how much I hate Shifting Sandland. I associate all of it with pain and agony. But literally, when you get into the level, I just hear... I literally hear the game going, wah, 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 and that's just how the whole level feels. The inside of the pyramid, I think, is actually pretty fun. It's kind of the one redeeming quality, but even then, so there's three stars in the pyramid, technically, because the four pillars, which is kind of one of the more annoying stars in the game, not only because it's kind of jank, like I said earlier, it's like, okay, you got to get on top of the, pier the pillars, that's thing number one. Then get on top of the pyramid, which can also be kind of jank. Hopefully the Koopa shell is still working. Then you have to go fight a boss, which is not hard, but it's a little irritating. And then you get the star. Like, I feel like there's a surprising amount of objectives for this one star. It kind of reminds me of the sunken ship in Jolly Roger Bay. It's like, okay, get the eel out. Go into the, like, get the eel out so you can go into the ship do the chests in order, and then actually go up to get the star while the whole thing is, like, trying to drag you down and shit because, like, super slippery or whatever. I actually find them both kind of annoying, but, boy, I think this one at Shipping Sandland is way worse. I feel like I had something else I wanted to say. <laughs> Just other shit I wanted to complain about, but... That's probably most of it. Oh, no. Okay, that's what it. It's the actual pyramid. Uh, there's three stars. That's one of them with all the objectives, which I don't love. There's just get to the top of the pyramid, which I think is genuinely fun. And then the last one, which is like, yeah, get these five specific coins, which I find really annoying because what it is, it's like you have to essentially fall into these specific spots and that's where the coins are. But because the way the camera is, you can't really see them when you're jumping. So it's a leap of faith. And I just kept falling and having to redo it and reclining to the top of the pyramid and doing it and falling again. And then getting more coke so I could do this again and motivate myself. I'm like, this is... Because I remember even saying to Clay as I was playing, I was like, okay, as much as I hate this level, the pyramid's pretty fun. And then after like my third time missing these fucking platforms that I can't see because the camera sucks. I'm like, never mind. Even the one good part of the level sucks. It's number 15. I think it was also number 15 the last time I played. It will probably be number 15 the next time I play. I feel like this is the one spot on the list that does not change. Which for me, I'm like, okay, it's at the bottom of the list. It's genuinely disliked. And I dislike it so much, I can't think of anything worse. Ladies and gentlemen, and okay, I mean, like, everybody. I'm sorry, I don't mean to just say, like, two genders and whatnot. But it's, we have a bottom of the fucking barrel. <laughs> to me, it is shifting sand land. A uh, number 14. I just want to make sure. Yeah, it's this. It, it's Hazy Maze Cave. 
I know there have been playthroughs where it was near the top of my list. I think at one point it was my favorite level, and it's not. It's where you get the metal cap. I'll give it that. I like the metal cap a lot. I don't really like the maze. It's not awful. I just don't like it. I think the 100... Oh, gosh, I had a lot of trouble getting the 100 coin star. I just kept... I kept dying at, like, really high amounts, and it annoyed me. The Mr. Eyes, which will give you five coins, are, like, super tight, which to me just made it really not fun because I just kept falling. The Red Coin Star with the elevator shit, I find it kind of annoying. It's not nearly as bad to me as Shifting Sandlands, but I don't find it really all that fun either. It's just kind of... Eh... And to me, that's really what the whole level is. Like, I kind of like the cave aesthetic. I like the music because it is the first time you hear that song in the game, which is like a remix of the underground thing. You know, do, 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 do. I like that, but it's not a level that I really find, to me, that interesting or really all that fun. So number 13... Also in the basement areas, Dire Dire Docks. <laughs> Starting to see a pattern. <laughs> like, man, there's four levels in the basement. Three of them are in my bottom three. I wonder what the next level's gonna be. It's not gonna be Lethal Lava Land, by the way. Like, it, it, that one does break the trend, but... Number three, or from the bottom of me, is Dire Dire Docks. Last time I played, this was, like, my third favorite level. Now it's my anti-penultimate in terms of how shitty it is. Um... I think this is the worst red coin star, uh, again, of just the courses, not including the Wing Cap Tower, Wing Mario over the rainbow, which was awful and I hated it. But I think of just all the courses, this is the worst one. Assuming you land every jump with the poles, which being honest, not that difficult. There was one that kind of gave me trouble because like the actual timing of it is a bit weird. And if you fuck it up, there's a pretty decent chance you'll just get sucked out of the level, which is really fucking irritating. Uh, but assuming you just nail every jump, it's really slow because you've got to wait for the pole to get in position. And then you got to wait for that pole to get into position. And you got to go get the blue coin so you can get the hundred coin star which is the worst 100 coin star in the game because there's like almost no room for error. There is 106 coins total, which is not a lot. I just, I, I find it frustrating because of that. It's not like, cool, like there's a lot of coins. I basically have to get all of them. Like there's, I can see the vibe of like the level being really, because I think last time I felt like this is just super low key. It's easy to find the coins because there's not that many, which makes it not a bad 100 coin star. But for me in this playthrough, I was like, no, it made it awful. Because there's just not a lot. There's not a lot of room for error. This shit with the poles is so slow. I had like 98 at one point. It was like 98 or 96 and I got sucked out of the level. I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. The other stars, I think, are fine. Like, get to the top of Bowser Sub. Oh, that, that's just super easy. The Get the chests in order. That took me a couple attempts because I was like, all right, I got the thing, and now I'm getting sucked into the whirlpool. This is, this is annoying. Like, the manta ray rings, the other rings, and then get the vanish cap, go to the bottom, and go through the thing. That's... They're, they were pretty easy. They weren't They weren't super fun. It's like, I'll give it this. The other stars aren't super annoying. But it has two, to me, incredibly annoying stars. That And one of them, I think, is arguably the worst in the game. Th to me, that that's enough to get to this level. Um, I would say that I really like the music. I feel like the reason I'm not really saying it as much is like, it kind of goes without saying I think the music is really, really good. The water theme is arguably the best one, though, so I really do feel like I should say that for Dire Dire Docks. But just, if this playthrough it didn't do it for me. So, number 12. 
Keeping with the water level theme, it's Jolly Roger Bay. I think the 100 coin stars, I, this is honestly a level that I think is fine. Now we're kind of starting to get less than the, I didn't like this and just, it's fine. I didn't quite love it. I think the stars with the eel aren't my favorites. There's one where it's at the end of its tail. And like I said, the first mission where you actually have to do quite a bit. The cannon one where you have to like shoot yourself onto the top of the pillar and then jump onto the thing. That took me a couple of attempts because I just kept miss. Oh, excuse me. I just kept missing it. I'm like, okay, now I have to go all the way the fuck back, try it again. All the way the fuck back. Now I gotta go all the way fuck back and try it again. Like, okay, that, that to me was super annoying. But overall, I don't think it's that bad. I think the 100 coin star is actually pretty easy. Uh, which to me is not a bad thing. It's, it's overall, I think it's just kind of fine. Again, the water level music, though, is spectacular. Number 11 for me in this playthrough was Tiny Huge Island. I tried the level a couple times, and I just wasn't getting into it. Like, I could... There, okay, the part of the level I fucking hate is specifically on the huge island. When you're trying to make a jump, and you essentially have to jump into the wind, the wind will lift you up and kind of put you on the platform. I died so many times because the wind just wasn't doing what it was supposed to. And the times when it was doing what it was supposed to, either it worked perfectly and I genuinely did not understand what I did right then and what I was doing wrong earlier, or two, Mario was just getting stuck. It's like, here's the platform that you're supposed to go on. Here was Mario. And then the wind's still pushing him up, but he's not moving. And that's a kind of finagle. And then he finally gets on top. I'm like, I don't know what the fuck happened. Okay. Okay. I believe you. And it was supremely fucking irritating. But then there was just a session where the level fucking clicked. I got the 100 coin star pretty fucking easily because there's a lot of blue coins around. I was able to make that jump no problem. So I was able to get to that other side of the island. I got the five itty bitty secrets. I fought Wiggler no issue. Uh, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, huh. You know... I was going to put this level a lot lower. It was going to be in the bottom three, maybe even the bottom two. Like, I wasn't going to beat Shifting Sandland, but boy, I was not caring for it. But then there was just that one session where the level clicked. It doesn't absolve all the other times I was playing it and not having fun. But I was eventually able to have fun and kind of had fun for a while, so I have to get the level that. Number 10. So number 10 is Wet Dry World. And the reason I'm giggling is because at some point during the run, I realized that I wasn't going into the level. And it's not even because I was like, man, I hate Wet Dry World. It's so bad. It's so annoying. I am avoiding it. It was just more of, I just did it. I'm noticing an echo. I don't know if that was there before. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hey, bud. But I just hadn't been going into the world and so eventually just got to a point where i was like i guess i'm just saving it for last now as a meme so yeah the last seven stars were just all of what dry world <laughs> but actually playing it i don't think it's that bad like the first star i got in the world was the hundred coin star without going to the downtown area it's not that bad to get it feels like there are coins a fucking plenty which to me is generally a good thing i'm Excuse me. The 100 coin star is not necessarily what I use to determine how much I like a level. Otherwise, what Dry World would be in, like, the top three, probably. But it it's one of it can be one of the more annoying stars to get. It's one of the reasons why Hazy Maze and Dry Dire 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 Docks are so low. So I have to give Wet Dry World that. I think the other missions are pretty all right. There's one where you're supposed to use, like, the arrow lifts to get to a spot. But if you get the tide high enough, you can just swim over to the box jump out hit the box and then jump out again and get the star which is just really funny to me i don't think the downtown area is that fun though the, like getting the red coins i thought it was kind of tedious excuse me the other star about like uh yeah get the vanish cap go over here and then like wall jump up i think it's fine it's something spectacular that's kind of it it's like i 
I find the other stars okay. I find the actual navigating of the world when you're at low tide and trying to get up where you have to let the dudes like scoop you and throw you up. I, I find that can be kind of annoying and not super fun. But overall, I think it's okay. Number nine for me is Cool Cool Mountain. I don't really have a lot to say about it. It's like, okay, I do like the slide quite a bit. I like racing the penguin. I like that when you get 120 stars, he gets really fat. And so he he gets harder because he gets faster. And also he can kind of block the screen. Like you can't see Mario very well, which I think is pretty funny. The I just like the way the level is designed, how you can be actively sliding down and sliding around. I think it's a really unique way of doing an ice world where it's not just, hey, it's really slippery, so you're falling. It's like, no, it's like it's a mountain and like you're actually sliding down. I, I do like that. I don't love it. To me, it is kind of a mid-level. It kind of always has been. Uh, I, I think one thing I can say I do like is the way the red coins are because it's not just like a gimmick thing where it's like, all right, you got to... Go to the downtown area. They're all just in the puzzle. I mean, I like Lethal Lava Lands because it's really fucking simple. But I like that it's like, no, just explore the level and you will find them. There's kind of one around every corner. I like the way they do it there. Uh, the Penguin Star is really annoying, though, because I think it doesn't shut up. I, I will bring that up. But I, overall, I think it's pretty good. Number eight, speaking with the word repeating twice and ending with Mountain, we have Tall Tall Mountain. I had fun with it in this run. I think normally I don't care for Tall Tall Mountain that much. We're like, nah, this this was clicking. The 100 coin star took me a couple attempts. But what I kind of realized was just start with the slide. Do the slide first. You can get about 50. Then once you've done that, it won't be that bad. And it worked. The, um... Yeah, so like the under coins isn't that bad. The red coins is really fucking easy. It's there's four right here, there's four right here. The actually like platforming and getting to the top of the mountain, I think, is actually pretty fun. There are a couple shortcuts you can use. What I love is the one star that's just on that um on the giant mushroom. And it's like, okay, what the game wants you to do is find the pink bomb, talk to him, open the cannon, go back to the start of the level, go into the cannon. Shoot yourself out of the cannon, get to the area where the wind is, the wind will pick you up, and then it will put you on the star. Or, what you should do, is while you're climbing the mountain, and there's that spot with the log, just run to the end of the log, long jump off the log, and land on the mushroom. If you do it well enough, you can land on the star. I know I've done it before, this playthrough I didn't quite land on the star, but I got really close to it. I was like, yeah, this is satisfying. Um... Yeah, I think it's actually pretty fun. It's not one of my favorites, but I like it. But I feel like this is kind of the part of the list. Tall Tall Mountain is like, okay, this is when I'm really having fun with every level. It's just, which one did I have the most fun in? So then we get to number seven, which is Snowman's Land. With Snowman's Land, I think what I like about it is how so much of the level feels designed around the Koopa Shell. I guess it's like the cool, cool mountain is all about sliding down. And that's how they do the ice world. This is more just like the, it is kind of more chill. I, I just kind of like that. I will say because of the Koopa shell, and again, it can kind of have jank hit detection. It didn't fuck me over in this run, which I'm thankful for, but you need it for the red coins. So hopefully that's not a big problem. Getting to the igloo without the Koopa shell, I personally find to be kind of annoying and a problem. But once you get in there, it's not too bad. The first star with the snowman. The way the game wants you to do it is you have to walk in step with a penguin who will like go forward, stop, and then like go backward and shit. You have to walk in step with him and he will block the snowman's fucking icy breath. It will knock you back to the start of the level. That is really annoying and I fucking hate it. The way I get the star that I did in this playthrough and I discovered on my last playthrough is go to the igloo, talk to the pink bomb, activate the cannon, and shoot yourself out of the cannon and land on his head. The last time I played the game, I landed on the star and I didn't do it this time. I got really close, kind of like in Tall Tall Mountain. I was like, that fucking close, but I like that. 
it is one of those things like in kind of both of them there's a star that's a real pain in the ass to get and then there's the fun way you can do it and finding those ways endears the level to me just a little bit more there's one of those in womp's fortress as well and i'll talk about it when we get there uh is there anything else to say oh i also like how when you start the level there's a star just right next to you it's like yeah go do this little quick ice maze thing i don't know why it just kind of does it for me there's also a bully and i like the bully enemies like you can just get a quick start that way i just honestly think the level's pretty fun Number eight, or excuse me, number six, I don't know how to count. This is where I bomb on Battlefield. I think I can make an argument that it should maybe be another spot higher, maybe another two higher, but I think this is fair. What I like about this level is, in addition to Peach's Castle, this kind of feels like the tech demo of this is a 3D environment. Go run around. Go explore. Go find shit. I think some of the other levels have, like Womp's Fortress in particular, it feels like the cool shit is a bit more condensed. Whereas this one just feels like it's a little, I don't want to say it's a little too open because it is pretty fun to run around in. But almost, I, okay, let me try this. I don't, it's not quite that there's areas where there's just kind of dead air, but it's not quite as tight as some of the other levels. Like the area right by the chain chomp, it's like there's just, there's a bunch, there's a couple of Goombas, there's a cannon, but there's not really much there. And then when you get across the bridge, before you get into that area, like the little gully with the big balls, there's an area to run around, there's like a couple of bombs, there's not really much to do. There's the area with the logs, which is where the red coin star will show up in, but there's not really a lot to do. It's just kind of free space to run around. And again, I think for the first level, it's like this is what the game can be to kind of get your bearings on the controls and the movement. I think it works fine, but I don't think it's quite as interesting as some of the other levels. There's also a star that's basically like, all right, shoot yourself out of a cannon, use the wing cap to do some shit. And I'm like, I don't like the wing cap. I'd rather not have to do this one star. I just find it kind of not fun. But I, I like the chain chomp thing. That's usually the first star I get in a run instead of King Bob-omb. I just like to do that one first. I love King Bob-omb. I like that he's in the new Mario Golf game. <laughs> Uh, I think he also was in those Super Mario Bros. movie. I was really, really happy to see King Babon. But, um, yeah, that, that's what I would say. I think I had that as number six. And I feel like, to, to me, that feels kind of fair. Maybe it should be above Rainbow Ride, which transition. I have Rainbow Ride at number five. To me, Rainbow Ride is just kind of about your vibe. If you are in a, I'm here... I want to get the next star. I, I Maybe like you just died and you kind of want to do something again. Or you're just like, I want to do the next thing. Like, I got my adrenaline. Let's go. The fact that there is a lot of waiting time makes the level feel kind of annoying. If you're not in that mood, though, and you're like, I just... If you feel more relaxed, like, I just kind of want to chill... You know, with all the bullshit I've gone through in some of these other levels, like that godforsaken clock, which I clearly love the clock. It's going to be in my top five. It's gonna be, if Rainbow Ride's number five, I haven't mentioned it yet. It's going to be in my top four. But, um, you're like, you know, with all the shit I've just been through in this game, it's nice to have a level that almost kind of plays itself where I can kind of relax and take the load off. And I just, I, I kind of get into that. I like the aesthetic. Like, I like the vibe of just having a magic carpet. I like the rainbows and shit. I like that the very last star in the game... I mean, maybe technically Wing Mario over the rainbows. Or, I okay, Final Bowser Red Coins, I would say, is probably star 120. Star 119 would either be Wing Mario over the rainbow or the last one in Rainbow Ride, which is somewhere over the rainbow. As someone who loves the Wizard of Oz, I just really like that that's the name of a star. And it's like, yeah, it gets to the top of the ship, jump in the cannon, shoot yourself, 
hope you fucking make it, which I did first try, and then bam, there you go. I just kind of like that. I like the ship. I like the big-ass fucking house. I just like the weird log things, the weird triangles. Like, I just like the actual architecture of the level. It just looks cool. I love that this is a fucking stage in Melee and an Ultimate. I love how an Ultimate, if you turn hazards off and you pick Rainbow Cruise, it's not called Rainbow Ride in there, it's called Rainbow Cruise. Maybe they switched to an Ultimate, but I believe in at least Melee, it's called Rainbow Cruise instead of Rainbow Ride. Anyways, point. If you take off the hazards, it's not a moving stage anymore. So you just fight on the ship. And I really like the ship as a stage. I think it's super fun. So it's kind of an extra thing that endears Rainbow Ride to me. The 100 coin star is kind of annoying because of how slow the level is and how annoying the blue coins are to get. You can do it without the blue coins. I didn't. I got really fucking close and then I died and I was pissed. But... I'd be lying if by the time I was done with the world, I wasn't thinking to myself, you know, despite my frustrations with it, I genuinely had a good time and I liked the level a lot. So number four, <clears throat> for me, this is Womp's Fortress. I feel like while Bomb on Battlefield, like I said, it's almost kind of like the tech demo. There's some dead air in it. Like there's just kind of some... There's not a lot going on here, but you can run around and isn't it cool? Womp's Fortress feels like the, there is something cool around every corner. There's a piranha plant really close by. There's, you can just jump onto the railing and then skip the part with the dudes pushing you. But like, that's a fun obstacle you can do. And then you can get the thwomps or you can just jump up here. There's a star that requires you to just shoot a wall with a cannon. That's just fun to me. There's another one, which is, shoot yourself through the cannon to get to like a really specific spot which is kind of ass i never really liked it or taking the pen out you can wall jump off the wall and just get onto the platform and get the star which honestly feels way more satisfying um I, is this the only level with a piranha plant no because like the bowser levels but I think this is the only course with a piranha plant. No, 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 sorry. Uh, that's very incorrect because uh, Tiny Huge Island. But I think this is the only one where the piranha plant lullaby plays. And I really like the lullaby. I think it's very sweet. I like King Womp. I love it. It's like, I'm not going to grovel or, or grovel. I, it just makes me giggle. I, I never really loved the Owl Star. I got it first try this playthrough. I'll take that. It's one that never really did it for me. But I like the other stars. I like the construction of the level. I really do feel like there was something cool around every corner. So the level never feels stale. And it rarely feels frustrating. Again, I think the shooting yourself out of the cannon one can be very frustrating on attempts. But just boop, boop. Never mind. That's super easy. So it endeared itself a lot to me on this playthrough. Because I think in other playthroughs, I've kind of had it near the middle of the pack. And I'm like, no, 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 this is number four. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> sorry. I had to drink some water after this. Uh, number three I have is Big Boo's Haunt. I can make it, I feel like my top three, maybe even my top four, but like the top three feel like basically any order would feel correct. I have Big Boo's Haunt. It is the easiest 100 coin star in the game because every boo gives you five coins i talked earlier actually i don't know if i said this earlier or if i talked about this in my other video so i will say this again just in case i didn't say it here it has one of my favorite exploits in the game or at least one of my favorite sequence breaking where when you first get into the level there is not the staircase going up to the second floor you have to get the first star you have to go on the ghost hunt, fight Big Boo, then you get the staircase, then you get the star, and every other star you select, the staircase will be there, explore the rest of the mansion. <clears throat> or, jump onto the wall, like once you get inside, jump onto the wall, wall jump off the wall, and if you do it at like the right height and angle, you can just land on the second floor. It's in, like I said earlier, it was this video maybe it was the last one i just recorded it's super inefficient but it just does it for me it's like i don't care that it's inefficient i don't care that it can actually take me a few attempts to pull this off this just makes me happy that i figured out that i can do it so i'm going to do it 
Uh, I don't love Big Boo's balcony because actually getting the star is a pain in the ass. I think there is one star I don't really care for. But I generally like Boo's as an enemy. I just kind of dig them. I know I have a friend of mine that really loves Boo. It's like just his favorite Mario enemy. And like, I, I get why. They're just cool. The red coin star is not really a problem. You actually get to use the vanish cap, which is nice. It it might have the same amount of stars associated as the metal cap. I'm not sure. But to me, it just feels like it's the most underused. Definitely compared to the wing cap, it has. One of the things I really love about it, though, is just its vibe. I love the name. It's Big Boo's Haunt. That's cool to me. I like that it has its own unique theme. No other level does. Every other world shares its theme with at least one other's. The Ice Worlds share a theme, which is a remix of the slide music. Um, Rainbow Ride and the Clock both use the slide music, just verbatim. Uh, Sandland and Lethal Lava Land share a theme. The Water Levels share a theme. Wet, dry, and hazy maze share a theme. Tall, tall, bob, womps, fortress, tiny, huge, all share a theme. I think that's all of them. Maybe I missed one. I don't think I did. Big Boo's Haunt is the only one that has its own unique one. It's just this creepy ambience befitting a horror level, and I really like it. It also has another unique theme because it has the carousel theme, and I love the carousel theme. <laughs> I've heard people debate about it, like, whether it's a really creepy theme or just a really pleasant theme. I've always found it very pleasant. I adore it. I guess I could see the just demented circus music vibe, but I don't personally get that. I just think it's fun. Like I said, like, I like that it has its unique music. I like that I found my own bullshit thing that I can do. It has a super easy 100 coin star, and it just has a really good vibe. Easily one of my favorites. Uh, okay, I wasn't sure if that's, I was like, 47 minutes, what the fuck, that's only 37 minutes, bet. Uh, number two, to me, it's TikTok Clock. I love this piece of shit. I love, pla I, to me, it's, like, if Rainbow Ride is the more just, there is still some jumping you have to do, you still gotta make, you still gotta do your platforming, but it almost feels more relaxing, like, this is your reward for the hard shit, TikTok Clock is the hard shit. It is the crazy platforming, it is the make sure you get these precise jumps, do you, I love that you can control the like vibe of the level. It can run normally, or you can have fast clock. You can have slow clock. You can have stopped clock. You can have a jank clock. I love that there's a jank clock. It's really fun. The hundred coin star is kind of ass. I remember that because I I got the hundred coins. But it was really high above me because, like, I just, like, jumped up, hit a block with coins, they showered on me, and then the star appeared above me. So I couldn't just get it by jumping, I had to side jump, but sometimes side jumping just doesn't want to work. So I tried to side jump into the star a couple times, couldn't do it, I got set on fire, and then I fell, and then I ended up dying. I was like, I have to do all this again. Okay. Okay. And then I did, and it wasn't awful. Just because I th I think the level's really fun. That's kind of it. I, I don't really have much else to say. It's like, I just, I was, like, the entire playthrough, I was looking forward to the clock. I just think it's great. And if you've been keeping track, you would know that only leaves one more level, and that's Lethal Lava Land. It's kind of funny to me that like, there's four levels in the basement, Three of them are my least favorite in the game, and the other one is my favorite. Other times where I played this, I thought Lethal Lava Land was overall in kind of the middle. I thought, it was like, yeah, the music's fine. I don't super love it. I, I think it's okay. But for some reason, I had a fucking blast. I love doing the log thing, and then just like, alright, I'm on the log. Now I'm just gonna <clears throat> long jump, get set on fire, and then land on the star. I love the bully enemies. I love... Okay, so I just love the sound effect anything has. It's like, uh, uh, uh. I think it's funny as fuck. I also, as fucked up as this feels to say, I love the sound they make when they die. Like, when they get knocked into the fire, just that... Goo, 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 goo. It sounds so cool. Like, it's so, like, visceral. I just dig it. 
the way you fight them is just kind of funny to me. I love the way they're designed. I love going around this level with a Koopa shell. I think the volcano is pretty fun. It's one of the, because the two stars you do in there aren't that bad, but I feel like it's one of those parts in the game where you're really kind of fighting the camera, but if you can get it right, it's not an issue. It is one of those levels where, like, it doesn't feel that big, but there's just kind of a cool little thing everywhere you go, and just, it's good. It's really fucking fun. I had a blast with it. So, that's it. Oh, one thing I forgot to say is, with Big Boo's Haunt, it does have the piano. The piano is fucking iconic. I love the piano. But as much as I have heard people say that the piano scared the shit out of them as a kid... I don't remember if it did. I It might have creeped me out a little bit, but I think I... Maybe it did scare the shit out of me as a kid. I'm not sure. But the thing that I know scared the shit out of me when I was a kid, and still does, I still don't like it and I hate that it exists, is the big fucking cheap, cheap and tiny huge island that could just swallow you whole. That shit can... I hate it. I sincerely fucking hate it. Bum... I just wanted to share that, like, I love this game. I clearly love this game. Shifting Sandland sucks. I hate it. I will always hate it. But basically, all the other levels are just varying degrees of great. Hazy Maze. I, I, I mean, even Hazy Maze I've loved before. It really just depends on the playthrough. Sometimes the vibes for a level are there. Sometimes not. Sorry, brain stop for a second. But um it's basically all I have to say. If you have if you have played Mario 64, I'm assuming you probably have. I feel like it is just one of the most well-known, well-played games. And maybe that's just because I grew up playing it. I just assume people have. What oh, excuse me, I'm sorry. What are some of your favorite courses? Like, are you like me and you're like shifting sandland fucking sucks? Is it a level you really like? And if so, what is it about it that really does it for you? Do you actually like the wing cap? Like maybe I am, maybe it is a hot take that I don't like it. I don't know, but I am curious to know, like what are some of your favorite courses? I didn't really talk a lot about specific stars that I like, but um, if you have any specific stars you want to give a shout out, do that too. And I'll talk to you next time I talk to you.